Our first interview of the morning is with Vinnie Jones. It's been just over a year since he had to face um, a, a terrible situation, an inconceivable thing, a, a life without his wife, his beloved wife, Tanya, after she lost a health battle with cancer. Yeah, but in the hope of helping others struggling with grief as well. Vinnie has now released uh, this memoir, Lost Without You. Uh, and this looks back at the incredible 27 years that he shared with Tanya. And we're delighted to be able to talk to him today. Um, Vinnie, good morning. And as always, um, our condolences to you, because I know it, it's, you know, July last year that you lost Tanya, but it still must seem very raw to you. Yeah, hi, Eamon, Ruth. Yeah, um, yeah, still very raw, um, especially now with promoting the book. Um, uh, I did the audio, which was very hard. I found that um, it helped in some ways and, and it shattered us in other ways. So um, just, you know, this will be today, the, all the publicity and everything's done, um, and then we can go back and try and be a bit more private about everything. See, but Vinny... The very fact that you talk about Tanya and you talk about what you're going through and you talk about what she went through, I think, I don't know whether it helps you or not, but it certainly helps an mm. awful lot of people who then feel we're not on our own going through this bereavement. Well, the people that have written in on my Instagram um, and Twitter, some of the some of the letters and, and messages have been overwhelming, really, Eamon. Um, and it just shows, you know, as a family, how much we were loved by the British public. They're interested in it. And obviously, for me now, is to say to people that um, have got major problems with, with, um, with deaths and divorces and children and... You know, it's it's a message to say, you know, we, we can get out there and there are professionals that can help us. Um, I didn't at first, and then I started reading up on some stuff about grief. Um, and then I started speaking to my psychologist that helped me um, give up the drink, and it's, and it's really helped. Um, and I just want to uh, get a message out there. And, and for people that, that are really overwhelmed with the grief, um, and I know that... You know, we get this numbness, then we get, like, an anger. Um, maybe it's because we should have done this or we should have done that, and then we get the fatigue. And I found I'm just kind of getting through the fatigue now. Um, two or three o'clock in the afternoons, I'd be absolutely shattered and wouldn't know why. But, um, you know, it got explained to me that if you was in a car and, and the red oil light comes on, you pull over and you call somebody, a mechanic, to come and help you out. And that's, that's where we've got to be, and especially for the fellas out there. And I know, you know, I worked on the building site for many years. You know, the lads, they go to work in the dark and they come home in the dark. When can they do it? So I would say to the lads and women out there to start reading up on it, Google up on grief and stuff, and, and, it, and it starts soothing it. And if you can turn the grief into joyous grief, um, if I can look up and I, and I have a good day, I know she's looking down and she's smiling, and, and that's what can get you through. Yeah, and, the, and that's when you start seeing a, a chink of light, I suppose, Vinny, at the end of that very dark tunnel, is able, being able to remember um, and smile about your life. And you had 27 years together. Um, tell us about the first time you actually laid eyes on Tanya, how you felt about her from that very moment. Well, we were 12 and it was in Watford. We went to a cricket match and she went with another family and we met there. Um, so that was our first little meeting and I think I was running around showing off a little bit, trying to impress her. And then we met again at 16 and then later on I had a house and I came back from Leeds and Sheffield and moved in and she was living next door. Um, so we met up again and then that was 27 years ago. But, um, you know, since then we've had some fantastic times. She had a heart transplant at 21, so it was always caring for her and looking after her and making her feel safe. And people say, how oh, did it last so long? She looked after me and I looked after her. And, you know, I think when she had the heart transplant, I've said to people, it's common knowledge, I think she was saved to save me. Um, and now I think it's my job to try and, try and save other people and try and help other people. Yeah, one of, the, one of the lovely things about your book is the amount of pictures, personal photographs, just family snaps that you've included, included in here. And uh, Tanya's dad, um, Lou... 
um, he said at the Father of the Bride speech, he says, Vinnie has a heart problem too. It's too big for his body. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wouldn't know that or wouldn't think that about you, Vin Vinnie. Well, I've done a good job keeping my private life quite private. Um, a lot of times, you know, media and and people want to want to know the ins and outs. But you know, we've kept that kind of private. You know, the visits to the hospital with Tans, and you know, I took that on board, Eamon, that you know that was my job. And I and he did say to me when I went round to ask him um, if I could manage her, um, if I could marry her, he said, you know, do you know what you're taking on? And I said, yeah, and I will fulfil that. And, and I can stand proud and say, I think I've done the best job possible. Um, you know, we're not God and we can't keep it going forever. And the opening um, few lines in the book is, you know, it's a love story. I, I didn't want to be sitting here and, and telling. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, I did my best. Um, I always thought that I could get over everything and she'd always look at me and say, I'm all right, Vin will keep me safe. Um, the final days, the final week was hardest of my life. Um, but also, my daughter helped me with this book, and she wrote um, some diaries. My, um, my Tanya wrote some diaries um, of when she had the heart transplant, and she went to the other side, and she passed away, and, and Dr Yakub at Harefield Hospital brought her back, and, um, and they're in there, but, and, and, it, and it shows how brave she was. And if anybody wants inspiration, on how to carry on through their grief, it's in there and they can read some of her diaries. And we thought it, it had to be a personal book. It's my daughter and myself telling the story about this fantastic, courageous, beautiful woman. But yet so many health problems throughout her life. When, when her dad said to you, um, Vinny, you know what you're taking on. I mean, Ruth's dad said that to me as well, but he meant it in a completely <laughs> different way. I mean, from Tanya's point of view, it was help. You knew you were taking on someone or being involved or having a life with someone who had serious health problems, not, not what killed her in the end, but serious health problems. Um, that's, that's, that's a big thing, my friend, isn't it? Yeah, and I think we, when you're young and in love, you're blind and you don't realise what you're taking on. But I thoroughly embraced every minute of it, Eamon. I slept in every, every hospital that she was in, whether it be intensive care or where a Cedar Sinai, whether it was down at Harefield, you know, I was there. And she always wanted to wake up when I was there, you know, and I had to be there. And, and we did that and we made it as... Um, as less frightening for her as, as we could make it. Um, and, you know, the story of this bravery, you know, also the, the cyclosporin from the heart, from heart rejection, you know, caused the, the cancer. But she also had skin cancer, which to, every two weeks she would have lumps cut out of her, stitched up, she'd come home, and her concern was what, what we wanted for dinner. Incredibly brave woman. Yeah, she was um, incredibly... An incredibly brave family. Yeah, and also, Vinny, you know, you have credited her before of saying that she, she saved you. You're talking, you know, you looked after her your whole married life in terms of her health and, and making sure she was OK. But you say she really was your rock. Oh, absolutely. You know, she was... Every time I messed up, and we all know it's been well publicised, um, quite a few times, she was there with open arms to catch me. Um, and, you know, we, on one occasion, on an airplane, it completely went wrong. We were building a lovely house up in Tring in Hertfordshire, um, and she just put her arms around me and she said, well, what's the problem? I'd live in a caravan with you. And that was the power of her love for me. It is a great, great love story. And, and, and the book is called Lost Without You. And to anybody who's going through this, Vinny, and um, they are lost. I mean, my, my dad's dead 30 years, and I can genuinely say it, my mother is completely lost without him. She's, she's been grieving 30 years without seeking help for it. And a lot of people will be in that, in that situation. Hopefully you won't be lost forever. How, do you think Tanya would want you to, to move on, or how would you move on? It's early days to, to be even thinking about that, but... What, what are your thoughts? Um, 
I don't think we have to move on too much. I think, you know, the precious life that we had for 27 years together is is going to override the rest of my life, Eamon. I think, you know, it's, um, as I say, it's, it, it's, it's for a lifetime I've lost, lost her, but not for eternity. And I can look forward to that. Um, what I, you know, where I do want to move on and, and, and help is Tanya's mum, Tanya's brother, my daughter, her dad. I was with, I was with Lou yesterday. We went, I went and picked him up. Um, we went to the golf club. We'd done a few things yesterday. We went and had a meal last night. Um, but, you know, my, my sadness is losing Tan's a wife. But can you imagine, you know, the parents and Kaylee losing a daughter and, and a mother as well? Yeah. So, you know, it's, everything's very, very fragile right now. It's been a year, 6th of July, um, and it seems like it was last week. So we've got a long way to go. But... If we can turn the grief into joyous grief, um, I think very slowly, you know, things will get better. You know, I do, I've told everybody this, the first thing I do is get up and make my bed. I have a little mind chat with her, um, get on with the day. And, um, and then we'll, and then we have a little, um, a little meeting at the end of the day when I'm going to bed before I go to sleep and say that was a good day. And it's all, you know, mind talking, but, you know, I've got, I think I've got um, a priority now of helping the family as much as we can. And my daughter's in LA still. She's she's bought a house with her partner. She's she's doing well um, as well as she can, you know. But I feel for her mum and dad and 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 her brother Shane. So, you know, as a as a family, this is where a family has to stick together. Um, and you know, they've been a massive family to me. Um, and you know, I'll always be in their debt. Uh, for, for looking after me for 27 years. You know, they took on a son as well and they treated me like that. And so that part of it now is is out there to, um, to you know, to, to live going forward. Um, she wouldn't want us to be really, you know, unhappy. Um, she'd want us all to be rejoicing, um, you know, the great love that we had. And she, she always was a magnificent um, a home builder and she brought us all together. Um, and we have to build on that because, you know, our lives sort of go different directions. Um, but, you know, it's down to my daughter now and to my brother-in-law, Shane, to, to keep that um, family spirit going for her. Yeah, well, I'm sure she'll be very proud of all of you, the way you're coping and, and supporting each other. Um, there's a beautiful picture of the two of you when you were so young on the back here. Um, and you say, I'll always love Tanya Lamont, yeah. who became Tanya Jones, who was always just my beautiful tans. We're so sorry for your, for your loss, Vinny. Our love to you and all the family, um, but I'm sure that Tanya will be very proud of you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, and, and I'd just like to thank the um, British public for being so fantastic. They really have, and um, I've been home four or five months. I'll be here through Christmas um, because it's where I need to be now. Um, all, our, all our close friends and people I don't even know um, just thank you so much and and the media and everybody have been fantastic so you've really made it a lot easier for us um and now it's going to be very private um I did say on Piers's show on last Saturday it was the last interview but this is my last interview and um I'll be watching you two on um Celebrity Gogglebox from now on <laughs> <laughs> well we hope we can make you smile Vinny we hope we can uh, good luck to you mate. you do take you care do. Thank, you thank you very much thank you thank you